You know what may seem pointless at first, but isn't? Dual booting with two copies of Windows XP. Would I recommend doing this? Not much, um, because as somebody with IT certification, it's pretty common sense that you wouldn't necessarily need to install a second copy of the same operating system. Uh, so I'm gonna do that, and I'm going to uh, see the difference between the new and the old copies, and I'm going to play some games on the new copy. So, let's get started. The OS that I'm going to be doing for this is Windows XP, which was released in October. October of 2001, almost 23 years ago. It was a, a particularly significant release of Windows and was a particularly successful release of being used even to this day in some areas of the world. It was replaced by Windows Vista in 2007 and then extended support for it ended in 2014 with extended support for a derivative of it ending in 2019. So it's a particularly not stable version as in it's not ideal for stuff like web browsing. I'm not saying you can't use Windows XP. I mean, there's probably gonna be somebody in the comments that's gonna be like, I still use Windows XP and well, cool. However, I'm choosing XP not just because it's a popular version Windows and there's a quite a few unique versions of it, but also because of the computer in question. My HP Compact 6005 Pro SFF. This is not the same computer as that 6005 Pro MT that I used for my Windows 7 for a week video, as this SFF has been a part of my collection for quite a long time and is the reason why I got the MT. It has a Windows XP install that has evolved quite a bit over time. It first was actually quite a decent install, but over time, issues started to arise. A lot of issues. Sometimes it hangs up boot. I don't have footage of this. It also does not like it when you put in a USB while in an actual Windows session. It's slow to get going and we'll just show the startup for reference only because it takes like five or so minutes to get going and be usable. But I have another partition on the drive. A 100 or so gigabit partition that I've always said, oh, I'll do something like it and I've put placeholders on it like recovery or Vista or stuff. Well, I think we should just uh, use this empty partition to install Windows XP Media Center Edition, which is more aimed towards media centers. Now, I'm not going to go through the installation too much because it's basically just your average Windows XP installation, and there's nothing special to really report home about, apart from the, uh, a box that just says installing Media Center at one point, but that's just Media Center. <laughs> oh my... <laughs> Well, after seeing this, I needed to install drivers, but before that, I decided to change this as boot option so that it is more understandable on which version you're starting. Now, we're going to install drivers, in which I have to change the uh, extraction le drive letter from the C to D, so that we're not installing the same drivers on the same install of Windows, that being the old one. But drivers uh, installed pretty successfully, so let's do a few tests on this thing and see if the older version is uh, slower than the newer version. Let's start with the startup. I'm going to be uh, doing a number of tests here to indicate how long the old copy uh, took to uh, load this and the new copy. On startup, the old copy of Windows XP took nearly 45 seconds to start up and just get to the desktop. That's not including the amount of time that it takes for it to load all this stuff that I have uh, shoved on that thing. Next, there's a word, which apparently I... I couldn't get the greatest accuracy with this, but it took like five seconds to load. Possibly more, but I got really fed up with how my timings weren't perfectly accurate. Next, we get to Adobe Photoshop CS2. This took 42 seconds to load. Yes, 42! That's going to become a pretty glaring issue later on when we test the Media Center one. And then Macromedia Flash MX2004, which took... 26 seconds to, to get going, which isn't as bad as it used to be in the past where it would take like a minute or more for this system to load it. And last for the original Windows XP install, it took 35 seconds to shut down. So what about the Windows XP Media Center Edition that I just installed? It took like 28 seconds to start up. Word started in two seconds and Probably one of the biggest differences is the time that it took Adobe Photoshop CS2 to load. I'm not basing it perfectly out here, but it took 14 seconds to load, which is a big improvement over that of the original 
copy of Windows XP. Macromedia Flash MX 2004 also started up at a much noticeable pace of less than 10 seconds. And it only took like 15 seconds for the sync to shut down. So that's quite impressive. So let's just try some games on here. I know I don't have the greatest selection of games and I could go for probably a few more games of when 2025 rolls around and you know what video I'm obligatorily gonna have to do. So there's Peggle, which I'm getting out of the way first because it's Peggle. I mean, it's a great game, but uh, we've also got some other great games in here. There's also Bejeweled 2, which runs quite well, and I spent a bit more time playing this game. Another title that we have is a Quake, which runs mm, quite well. I've gotten a tinge better at this game since the previous uh, video in which I played this game, which was literally just two videos ago. Half-Life, because, well, Half-Life, and by the way, I had to change the resolution settings because of the fact that this PC did not like the 640x480 default resolution. And then last but not least, Toho 7, because of course I've got to save the best for last. And that's generally going to summarize this uh, video. It's surprisingly better than I would have thought, and, well, this does give me two avenues to go down when I start up the system. Do I want the more program build original install of Windows XP that is going to take longer to start up but has a lot of historic value and whatnot on this channel? Or do I go for the newer, more performance-oriented one with less programs on it? It's a great decision for me, and it turns out that this probably isn't as pointless of a dual boot as it may have initially seemed. 